We'll show you how you can determine the voltage supplied by different arrangements of cells in an electrical circuit. We'll start out by looking at cells arranged in series. The rule is, the total voltage supplied by a battery of cells in series is the sum of the voltages supplied by each cell. The equation we can use is V total equals V1 plus V2, etc. The voltage of each cell is added up. Here are two cells in series, a 9 volt cell and a 6 volt cell. Both cells in series are in the same loop or pathway. Each electron has to pass through both cells. As an electron passes through the 6 volt cell, its electrical potential increases by 6 volts. Then as it goes through the 9 volt cell, its electrical potential increases by another 9 volts. So passing through both cells, its electrical potential goes up by a total of 6 plus 9, or 15 volts. A voltmeter measures the difference in electrical potential of electrons, or what is called potential difference, between different points in a circuit. In this location, the leads from the voltmeter touch the circuit at point A and point B, so it measures the potential difference between point A and point B. The reading on the voltmeter is 6 volts. When the leads from the voltmeter touch point B and point C, it measures the potential difference between points B and C. So it reads 9 volts. So what do you think the voltmeter will read if its leads touch point A and point C? The total potential difference is 6 plus 9, or 15 volts. So the voltmeter reads 15 volts. To find the total voltage supplied by cells in series, the given equation can also be used. And because we only have two cells, we can say that the total voltage, V total, is equal to V1 plus V2. We'll call the voltage of the 6 volt cell V1 and the voltage of the 9 volt cell V2. So V total equals V1 plus V2, or 6 plus 9, which is equal to 15 volts. We can represent cells in series in a more compact way. We bring the cells together and represent them with alternating short lines for negative terminals and alternating longer lines for positive terminals. So it's positive to negative to positive to negative. And we can replace the 6 volts and 9 volts by 15 volts for the total battery. The very common voltage for cells is 1.5 volts. So two 1.5 volt cells in series can be depicted like this. And because they are in series, the total voltage of this battery is 3 volts. A group of four 1.5 volt cells in series would have a total of 4 times 1.5, which is equal to 6 volts. Cells in parallel behave differently than cells in series. The rule is, the total voltage supplied by cells of equal voltage in parallel is the same as the voltage supplied by each cell. Just a note here, in this course, any cells that are in parallel to each other will be of equal voltage. The equation we can use for cells in parallel is V total equals V1 equals V2, etc. Here's an arrangement of two 6 volt cells in parallel. If we attach the leads of a voltmeter across the first cell, the voltage reads 6 volts. And if we attach the leads across the second cell, it also reads 6 volts. So what do you think the voltmeter will read if we attach it to the whole combination like this? We see it also reads 6 volts. If we use the given equation, we have just two cells in parallel. So we can say that V total equals V1 equals V2. V1 and V2 are both 6 volts. V total equals V1 equals V2. So V total is also 6 volts. Now you may be wondering, why would one put more than one cell in parallel when the voltage stays exactly the same? 
The simple reason is putting cells in parallel will make them last longer than having an individual cell. And the more cells there are in parallel, the longer they will last, given a certain load. Look at the simulation for a while. We've colored the electrons that go through the left cell green, and the ones that go through the right cell blue. Here we're showing electron flow rather than conventional current. All of the electrons pass through the resistor, where some of their potential energy is converted to heat. You can see that half of the electrons that pass through in a given time interval are green, and half are blue. We can see that half of the electrons that go through the resistor, the green ones, get potential energy from the cell on the left. And half of the electrons that go through the resistor, the blue ones, get potential energy from the cell on the right. So half of the energy converted to heat in the resistor came from the cell on the left, carried by the green electrons. And half came from the cell on the right, carried by the blue electrons. So the two cells are sharing the work. You can see that each cell is supplying energy at half the rate the resistor is using the energy. Now we'll cut the wire from the cell on the right, closing off this loop of the circuit. In order for the resistor to convert energy to heat at the same rate as it was before, the green electrons must extract energy from the cell on the left twice as quickly as they did when both cells were working. The cell on the left is doing all the work now, and losing energy faster, so it will burn out much more quickly than it would if both cells were sharing the work. You can see that when two cells in parallel are both operating, this cell loses energy more slowly, so it will last longer. Having more cells in parallel will share the load even more, making each cell last even longer. Now we'll look at some cases where some cells are in series and some are in parallel. In the following examples, we'll assume that each individual cell, shown by one short line and one long line, has a voltage of 1.5 volts. Let's say we're asked to determine the reading on the voltmeter for this arrangement of cells. We see that the group of cells on the red line on the left has three 1.5 volt cells in series. When cells are in series, their voltages add up, so the total voltage of this group of three cells is three times 1.5, which is 4.5 volts. This group of three cells in series on the second red line will also have a total of 4.5 volts as well as this group, and this one. This is just like having four 4.5 volt cells in parallel. When cells are in parallel, the total voltage is the same as the voltage of each cell. So the total voltage of this combination of cells is 4.5 volts. Here's another example. We're given this arrangement of 1.5 volt cells and we're asked to determine the voltage on the voltmeter. Looking at these two cells on the left, we see that they are two 1.5 volt cells in parallel. Remember for a group of cells in parallel, the total voltage of the group is the same as the voltage of each cell in the group. So as far as voltage is concerned, this combination of cells is like a single 1.5 volt cell. Now we'll consider this group of cells up here. They are three 1.5 volt cells in series. Remember when cells are in series, their voltages add up. 
So the total voltage of three 1.5 volt cells in series is 3 times 1.5, which is 4.5 volts. We can consider these two groups of cells as being in series with each other. If we replace the voltmeter with the resistor, so current can flow, every electron that goes through a cell on the left must go through the cells on top. Adding up the voltages of these two groups in series, we get V total is equal to 1.5 volts plus 4.5 volts, which equals 6 volts. So the voltage on the voltmeter will read 6 volts. Another way we can look at this, an electron will pass through one of the cells on the left, increasing its potential by 1.5 volts, then through the cells on top, increasing its potential by another 4.5 volts. So this electron has increased its electrical potential by a total of 6 volts. A different electron will pass through the other cell on the left, increasing its potential by 1.5 volts, then through the cells on top, increasing its potential by another 4.5 volts. So this electron has also increased its electrical potential by a total of 6 volts. So every electron that passes through this arrangement of cells increases its electrical potential by a total of 6 volts. So again, the voltage supplied by this arrangement of cells is 6 volts. Thank you.